Some say the gods are descending on planet Kray. Others will say it's the work of an enemy stand. Either way, you're going to get punched a lot of times in your face. Are we still talking about Vanguard? Hey guys, welcome to the very first set review of Infinite Deity Cradle and we're gonna start off right at the bat with the new Genesis support card and there is a lot to talk about as not only do we have the new set cards, we also have a new Genesis trial deck to go over as we're gonna mash them together in one video. So this is going to be a long one, so without further ado, let's jump right into the cards as there's a lot to talk about as they're gonna incorporate this new Astro Play mechanic in their moveset and also all this Force Marker generation. So without further ado, we jump right into the new reprint cards. And for them, we have this grade 2 Strong Bow of Starry Knight Ulseus. And its ability was on a record circle. At the end of the battle, it attacked a Vanguard, cost, put this unit into your soul, draw a card, and soul charge one. As a term of reprint, this isn't really great. It's just a one star. And before you're gonna go crazy and say, well, this is a much better card, this is a reprint rating and not the value of the card itself. Then the second reprint that we got is Administrator of Hope Pandora. And this is just the old generic grade one PG. So it's not really that great. It's a one star. But it wasn't the only PG reprint that we got, as we also got a reprint of Goddess of Self Sacrifice Kushinada, the draw trigger PG. So, this is something that we wanted for a long time the reprint of the draw trigger PGs. Sadly, unlike I would want it to grant it five stars, I can only give it three stars. Because what they decided to do is only grant one copy per trial deck. So if you want a playset of these things, you need to buy four trial decks or fetch them online from the previous set as double R's. So yeah, not the great ideal way to going about doing this type of reprint. Then of course, besides these type of reprints, we also got the reprint of all the generic triggers. So two crits, one draw and one heal, but I'm only gonna give them one star as they're just generic trigger reprints. But with those triggers, we also got the third crit trigger for them and that's Mercury of Gravitas. And just like all the new triggers that we're going to get, it's a one of three stars as it just opens more deck designing and more options in your playstyle as you can now go hyper aggressive or just a combination of more draws or more control with at least a different trigger lineup. They also got a new starter that for them is Pan of New Style, but it's just the normal starter that we've seen with all the other starters. It's just a different artwork. So once again, only one star for this card. Then we get in the Vanillas and for them, they got a new 10K, 10K grade two vanilla that is White Clove Sorcerer Cult, but they already got the 10K, 10K vanilla. So it's just a reprint to, of some sort. So I'm gonna give it one star as yeah, there is no real reason to add this card to the deck if we are Already have a version of it and the scene is the first second support wave for Genesis this will also include the new type of drop draw grade 1 PG and just like all the other drop draw grade 1 PGs I'm gonna give it three stars as it at least opens up more deck design especially with the third crit trigger in the mix now we go over the generic support cards that can be incorporated in any type of Genesis deck and the first one I'm gonna take a look about is this grade 3 Perseus of Probity and its ability is auto vanguard the rigged circle when it attacks a vanguard Cost, counter bless one, draw two cards, and put a card from your hand into the soul. So this card allows you to go faster through your deck, but at the same time, instead of just outright discarding them in a type of cycle, this allows you to put it into your soul. And this will interact quite well with all types of Genesis cards. It allows Himiko to build up more precisely, as you can just shove in triggers into the soul, but with the extra draw, it gives you more ways of filling your hand with more cards. And the fact that it also works in Rigor Circle opens it up to be a good support card for all these types of decks. So yeah, I think it's a solid free star card as it can be run in any type of deck and it's just a good solid support card. The next we got the Battle Dory card for Genesis and for them it's this grade 2 Dionus of Beautiful Brew. And its ability is auto Rigor Circle. When it attacks, cost discard one grade 3 or greater card from your hand. Until the end of the battle, this unit gets power plus 5k, and when your opponent would call cards from his or her hand to the Guardian Circle, he or she must call two cards at the same time. So in this case, it's a Battle Dory unit that gains power, so it can beat over Great Freeze. But there's two 
problematic factors about this card. First off, it's a 9k body in a Force Clan. So you're sacrificing your stability of your 10k Grade 2s. But not only that, it costs you a card. So be able to use the Battle Glory effect of this unit, you need to discard a card, so you need a minus from hand. But not only just a generic minus, you need to discard your Great Freeze or higher. So that's either a Great Free or the new Astral Deity Valkyrian, that's a Great Five. And that's not really ideal, as in the Astral deck, you need your Great Fives. You need your Valkyrians, otherwise the decks won't do anything. And you also need your Great Freeze, as those enable you to go towards the Great Five. In that case, it doesn't really help the deck all that much, especially the 9k body, as that deck doesn't really help too much uh, with empowering the rear guards. It's all about the center column. It will then be used in the generic support section for other decks like Himiko or Artemis. But then again, this doesn't really help them all too much. Yes, we have a Battle Door unit. Yes, it gains the power, but we need to effectively minus. So yeah, I can only give it two stars as it's not really that great in terms of Battle Door units. Then we're going to follow up with some questionable grade freeze. As the first one is Spiritalist Sorcerer Crooked. And its ability is auto the Rigger Circle. When placed, Soul Charge 1 for each of your units, including this unit. So it's just to enable Soul. It doesn't really do anything, it's just to help generate more Soul. But it's dependent on other cards, which it won't help to get to those cards. So yeah. One star. Then another one of these cards that's so weird. That's this great free. Sumanu of Divine Punishment. And I'm still questioning of which player is ge getting the other side of the punishment. As I'm not sure who's the worst off of this part. Because its ability is act on finger circle once per turn. Cost Soul Blast 10. That's a big one. So I'm expecting some major results. You and your opponent return all of their rearguards to their decks. And shuffle it. And draw up the free cards you perform first. So both players' fields get wiped. And both players get to draw free. But you are the one that's paying Soul Blast 10. How does this help Genesis in any sort of form? Because the problem is Soul Blasting 10 means it's a pretty late, late skill. How does this help you in a late game scenario? Yes, yeah, sure, they have a full field and you wipe them. But so do you. So you're you're equally screwing each other and you're just giving your opponent draws. Yeah, sure, your opponent can have more units onto the field so you're minusing them more. But then again, you're giving them the draws so they can use that for shield value. One star. If you have anything better for this card, let me know in the comments down below because this, this thing is just, just stupid. Then a follow up, we do have an interesting grade one that is Sodela of Loving All Spices. And her ability, and this is a 7k body, but her ability is auto rigor circle when placed, cost, rest this unit, and until the end of the turn, one of your vanguards gets power plus 10k and reduce the next soul blast you pay by two. So this is similar to the previous support with which we're doing soul blast. But the interesting part about this is that you need to rest it. That isn't really that big of a problem as this is 7k body. So you couldn't really use it as an aggressive play anyways. So by resting it and giving your Vanguard 10k power gives you more of a wriggle room in aggressive nature as your Vanguard can at least beat over defensive trigger. So it doesn't really matter if it's the second or third attack of that turn. Also, reducing the Soul Blast by 2 is pretty nice, as you can make other skills pretty cost effective. And it does interact quite well with Kumin, but the only thing is by Kumin, sure, it can only bounce back standing units, so you can resolve this skill and then use Kumin's ability. But the next turn, you can bounce it back and do it again, and give, once again, your Vanguard plus 10k power. So this interaction can be used in some kind of aggressive nature. So it gives some nice interaction with other cards. Soul Blast reducing is nice, the 10k power is also nice. But it's not super amazing, so I think it's a solid 3-star card for that, as it's a good center engine piece for some kind of build that can be incorporated with the old cards, and in some case with the new cards, as reducing the Soul Blast a little bit can help you pay for certain skills, like the Trial Deck Grade 3, that costs precisely 2 Soul Blast. And talking about Trial Deck cards, let's take a look at another Trial Deck Grade 2, and this time it's Prometheus of Dancing Lights. And its ability is Auto Vanguard the Rear Circle. When placed, look at the two cards from the top of your deck, put one card among them into your soul, and put one card from among them on the top of your deck. So it's somewhere similar to the Oracle of Ink Tank playstyle of manipulating the top deck, but instead of adding it to hand, we put it to soul. And it makes sense for Genesis if we use the soul more often than cards in hand, so this is a pretty solid skill. And the fact that it works on Vanguard Circle as well as on Rearguard Circle opens up for a lot of playability for this card. So 
that's already a pretty good sign. But then we get the second ability and that makes the card even better. As that is other Ringard Circle, when it attacks, if your opponent's Vanguard is a great for your greater, one of your Vanguards and this unit gets power plus 5k until the end of turn. So your Vanguard gets plus 5k, so that makes him an 18k attacker. If you combine it with the great one that we just talked about that rests itself, that's 28 potentially. But this will turn into a 50k unit, meaning with a 8k booster, it becomes a 23k column. And that's a good magic number, especially with the new support, as this whole new Astral deck has some problems in empowering the rearguard circles. It's all about Vanguard and the Astral Deity behind it that's being built in the back row behind the Vanguard circle. So your side columns won't be that effective in pressuring your opponents. So having the ability to make solid lanes is a big plus. And it also works with the previous support and something with Himiko that can empower it with their force trigger effect can turn it into a further freaky column. So that's also pretty nice. So overall, I think it's a very good four star card that can be used in all kinds of Genesis decks. So yeah, a very solid addition for the clan. The next up, we have another solid addition for the clan. And this time it's a triple R from the set that is Prosperous of Fairlight. And its ability is continuous of Vanguard to Rearguard Circle. During the battle, it was boosted. This unit gets power plus 5k. So just like the previous one, it can build a 23k column, which is pretty nice. And you don't have to do anything and it's continuous. So it doesn't matter if it's on plays or whatever. It's always live with a booster. But the main thing about this card lies in its second ability. And it's auto on Vanguard Circle. When it attacks, cost Soul Blast 1, reveal 3 cards from the top of your deck. Put up to one great free or a greater card from among them into your hand and put the rest into your soul. So you pay one soul bless to potentially fill it back with three cards. So there's a plus two on soul. Or you can get a plus one on soul as you get two cards in and one in hand. And that's pretty nice as it's set up future plays. But not only that, if you get the manage to fix a great free or a great five that is the new Valkyrian then you're pretty much set for the rest of the game afterwards as you just fix some issues if you don't have the cards in your hand to make plays the following turn. So this is a pretty solid card that can work in any type of deck. If you run Great Freeze, this will help you with a little bit of consistency and otherwise it can fill your soul with more cards that can be used for other cards like Himiko, even Artemis and whatever you want to play with. And just the fact that it can search out the Great Five as well gives the new Valkyrian deck a bit more consistency as without it, it just f falls flat on its face. So overall, it's a very solid four-star card in my book as it's just a very strong, solid addition for consistency-wise, but also pressure-wise, thanks to the ability to make solid 23k columns. The next up, we've got another interesting support card and that's this great one, Astria of Fall Heavens. And, her, and once again, a 7k grade one, but her abilities are a bit different as her skills are auto vanguard to rear circle. When placed, draw a card and put a card from your hand to the bottom of your deck. If this unit is on the vanguard circle, soul charge two. So basically you can use this to have a, a, have a cycle going on, but in some case be a extra mulligan as you put it back into your deck. And if you write it, then it's basically an extended mulligan, but you also get the two soul charges. So you're set up soul for future skills. And that is pretty nice if you can manage to write this on turn one. But then we get the second ability and that's auto on rigor circle. At the end of the battle, it boosts it, cost soul bless two and return this unit to your hand. So for the soul you just generated, you can also bounce it back to hand. And that's pretty nice as add more shield value, but also you can reuse this first ability to dig deeper through your deck. So this card is basically a way to dig deeper through your deck to add to your consistency cards. The only downside is that it's a 7k body, so it won't help you with early game aggression. And just as I stated before, Genesis has problems with building solid side lanes. So the 7k body will hinder that even more. So that will put the card in a very awkward position. So for that, I only, can only give it three stars as it hinders the power potential of the deck, but the card gives a lot more for consistency value as the ability to search for your deck at a fast pace as this card allows you to do you can do all kinds of crazy things there is value in that aspect but only if you have a little bit of a high roll to go in a multiple session of digging through your deck otherwise this card falls a bit short next we got two cards that interact with the amount of force markers that we can generate and the first one i'm going to talk about is this great two witch of ten thousand turtles caper and her ability is continuous on record circle during your turn if your vanguard circle has three or more force markers this unit gets boost and 
power plus 10k. So this allows you to generate more powerful attacks as you now can have a great two in the back row and be able to boost as a 19k unit. This does give you a bit of a circumvention between the whole issue that you cannot build solid lanes. But the fact that you need to sacrifice a grade 2 for that isn't really ideal. And also it is a 9k grade 2. So if you don't have the force markers, it doesn't really do anything. And it doesn't really help you at all. And the fact that you need to have free force markers means it's pretty late game in a generic Genesis deck. So in generic Genesis decks, this pro most likely is a dead card. But in the whole Astral deck, this is also not really ideal as it means that your early game aggression is non-existent with this card. The moment that you can generate free force markers is probably the moment that you are almost done and you can start really unleashing the pain hammer. So having this card really won't be that significant. So for that, I'm just gonna give it two stars. It's not outright useless, but it's, it's you can almost say it is. Then we have a great one with a similar condition, but with a bit more usability. As here we have the great one, Battle Maiden in Marie. And her ability is act on Vanguard Circle once per turn. If your Vanguard Circle has three or more forest markers, cost Soul Blast 2 and Counter Charge 1. So this allows you to trade Soul for Counter Blast. And it's, it's pretty obvious that they use two Soul for one Counter Blast, as you're going to see when you look at all the other cards, as we have a Grade 3 that can use two Soul for generating a Forest Marker, but we also have a Grade 3 that can use one Counter Blast for generating a Forest Marker. So they both have equal value in Genesis, so trading two Soul for one Counter Blast is the same as one Counter Blast trading for two Soul. However, that one sounds really bad if you say it out loud. So this is pretty nice. And you can say, well, why the once per turn? They had to do this. If they did not add the once per turn on the card, Genesis would have an infinite loop and nobody would be happy with it. And the infinite loop that I'm talking about is with the old double R battle made in Shitata Rahime, as her ability is act counter blast one, reduce the next soul blast by two and give an other unit plus 3k. If this one wasn't once per turn, you could infinitely loop those two abilities and give all your units except herself, but at least all columns, infinite power. So yeah, they have to give this unit the once per turn restriction, otherwise it would be nuts. This is overall pretty solid card as it gives you more counters options and we don't really have any counters options in Genesis. So this does also have some value in other Jedi decks besides the whole Astral Plane. Yes, Having free force markers will take you time, but there is definitely an argument to make that you are going to get there in some games and then having the counter charge will help you because probably at that point you used all your counter blast. So having a way to then refill that counter blast at least opens up for more end game scenarios for other decks. And for the Astral Plane deck, it opens up more use for your counter blast as counter blast will go pretty fast with this new deck so it has definitely use in the whole astral deck so for that i'm gonna give it three stars as it's just a solid resource engine now with those generic cards out of the way we're gonna take a look at all the new cards that are generating force markers and the reason why they're all generating force markers is that we can open up an astral plane that can then host a astral deity that's a new grade five that's a lot of stuff that's interacting with each other but it will make sense once we take a look at all the cards and the first card that we need to talk about is the card that basically introduced this whole shit show or this whole circus for Genesis. And that's the Troll Deck Grade 3 that allows this mechanic to exist. And that is Gleaming Lord Uranus. And his abilities are Continuous of Vanguard Circle. If your Vanguard Circle has five or more force markers, your back row center rearguard circle becomes an astral plane. Only an astral deity can be on an astral plane. So to explain what an astral plane is, let's take a look at the astral plane card itself and the rulings on the card. So this is an astral plane and once this card is placed on the back row rearguard circle, the following goes. This rearguard circle is an astral plane. Astral planes have the following rules. Great is ignored when calling an astral deity. So even though your vanguard is grade 3, you can call whatever grades you want, even grade Infinite, great, 999. If the card on an astral plane is not an astral deity, put it into the drop zone. The unit on the astral plane can attack from the back row and perform drive checks. What I mean by that, even though a card might not have twin drive on the skill icon, every card, when it attacks as a vanguard or when drive checks are enabled, have at least one drive check. That's just how vanguard works. Cards revealed for those drive checks are put into the soul instead of your hand. So you're not going to plus up those extra drive checks. At the end of the turn, 
Put the unit on the astral plane on the bottom of your deck. This is important because even though you might not attack with the astral unit for some reason, it will be put to the bottom of the deck anyway. So keep that in mind when you're placing a card onto the circle as try to make most of it. So now we know that it can open up the astral plane. So that's not really super significant as that's the major mechanic of the deck. Basically, this is to be expected of the main grade freeze of this deck, otherwise the whole deck won't function. But the thing that makes Uranus unique is its second ability, and it's Auto Vanguard the Rearguard Circle. When placed, cause Solace to get an imaginary gift force and put that marker on your Vanguard Circle. So what's amazing about this card is the fact that it works on Vanguard Circle as well as Rearguard Circle, and it has a force marker on its own. So once you write it, you get a force marker. Then you can Solace to and get another one. But you can also place it on the rearguard circle and get the force marker that way and combine it with something like Kumin that can bounce it back and you can call it again, you can get another force marker. So this is already great for its own build, but you can just splash it in any type of deck to accelerate to those force markers a bit quicker so you have access to the grade 1 that we just talked about that can counter charge or even the grade 2 that can boost and gain power. So this is a very solid support card for Genesis as a whole as it enables its own build but can even empower other builds. So yeah, for that, this is a solid four-star card in my book as it opens up a lot of different options for Genesis. Now, with that said, we need to take a look at the new grade five that is also part of this mechanic so we know what we're striving for and what every card is basically enabling. In this set, we got introduced to this star deity and that is a giant deity of distant world, Valkyrian. And no, it's not the Magnet Warrior, it's a Jojo reference for some reason. And its abilities are continuous. This card cannot be ridden. Quite obvious because look at the freaking base power. It's 70k. Although when on a non astral plane circle retire this unit. This is really weird, a weird worded skill. As basically say that when it's not on a astral plane retire the freaking unit. It could also just make it a continuous skill. But for some reason it went with auto. But the skill that we actually are interested in is this third skill and it's auto rigged circle when placed from hand look at the five cards from the top of your deck put one card from among them into the drop zone and until the end of the turn this unit's drives is the same as the grades of the cards put into the drop zone shuffle your deck so you can manipulate the drive checks of this unit you can either give it zero drive checks by mailing a trigger give it one two three or five if you mail a non or valkyrian that's major as you can potentially have seven drive checks in the turn granted the five drive checks won't go to your hand they all go to the soul thanks to the whole thing of the astral plane itself but then again you're filling the soul with five cards so you can use that for other resources so you can then view other kinds of crazy stuff so there's a lot of potential in this card and the 70k body makes it an insane beater that's basically pg or gg and especially with five drive checks with all the crits that can fly through your uh, uh, through your ears, I mean that that's pretty insane. So yeah, that's a pretty good skill, and it, the fact that you can manipulate the amount of drive checks gives you outs against really nasty interactions that work work against you when you have multiple drive checks. Think about Brent. You don't want to have drive checks if you're up against Brent. Well, I'm just gonna mill a trigger, and this is just a beat stick then. It also is great that you can mill a trigger in the case that you're almost deck out and you still want to beat them with this thing. You can then have zero drive checks and then just have a solid attacker. And it also enables the whole clan to have a fourth attack. Because it can attack from the back row. It's also pretty nice. So overall, edit, I'm going to give it four stars. Yes, you can say five stars for all the extra benefit. But then again, think about it. You need to work to get through, through this thing. It's very unlikely you're going to get it on the first grade free turn. Second grade free turn, probably, most likely. And for third grade free turn basically granted but you still need to work towards this and the whole deck needs to work towards this specific card is this all worth it somewhat yes but not completely that's why it's a four star card if it was even crazier than five stars no problem because then building a deck around it and making you work so hard for it would be a five star solid but this is four star in my mind maybe we get another second copy of this astral dt because there's also a second problem to this and that's the fact that you're adding different grades to your deck just like whole, the whole gear chronicle debacle with higher grades grade fours in your main deck it will lessen the consistency of your decks luckily we have searchers that will increase the consistency but 
it will only do so much. Now with that out of the way, let's take a look at all the cards that can generate force markers and quickly disassemble them to see how effective they will be for Genesis. So first off, we have this great one, Atlas of Heavenly Spree. And its skill is auto Vanguard Circle, when placed, Soul Charge 1. So on right, Soul Charge 1. That's nice, you get an extra soul, it can set up. So yeah, it's a 50% bargain of the great one, 7k that can Soul Charge 2. But it's nice to have extra ways to solo fill out the soul, especially with your Trada Grade 3. Then its second ability, and it's the main kicker of the skill, is Act on Regular Circle, cost, count the plus one, and put this unit into your soul and draw a card. And if your Vanguard is an Astro Poet, that's the Trada Grade 3 Uranus, but also the new VR, and those are the only two Astro Poets right now, get an Imaginary Gift Force and put that marker on your Vanguard Circle. So in any type of deck, you can count the plus one, put it in the soul, and draw a card. Not great. That's not what you want to use. You want to get the extra force marker to make the cost worth it. And in that sense, it's a pretty solid skill to have that effect. As it's an act ability, means you can use it on the turn you write grade 3. So with this, in combination with Uranus, you have a potential of getting 5 force markers on your first grade 3 turn. So this enables a lot more potential. Also, it can be used in decks outside of the whole astral deck so in when we take all that in consideration and the fact that this enables a turn one valkyrian makes me to believe it's a four star card enabling that is a big big plus then next up we have another great one but that's not as good as atlas is as here we have saturn of opportune time and its ability is continuous regular circle if your astral plane has a unit this unit gets power plus 5k so you need to have valkyrian on the board so you first need to build the astral plane and then also have valkyrian in hand to call it then this unit gets plus 5k so in most situations, this skill is pretty redundant. It's pretty useless. You won't use it in the early game. But then we have a second ability, and this is supposed to make up for it, as it's all in a regular circle. When your Astral Poet is placed on the Vanguard Circle, cast, discard a card from your hand, and rest this unit, get an imaginary gift force, and put that marker on your Vanguard Circle. So, yes, this does allow you to have a turn one Valkyrian just like Atlas. But the hoops you need to jump through for this is ridiculous. As this thing needs to be already present on the field before you write your grade 3. So either you need to have this thing on turn 2 on the field. Or you already need to be on grade 3. Call it and the next turn you write another grade 3. Then you get the effect of. And that's pretty bad against control clans. As they can just remove it from the field. This is a big red flag for them. And they just want to kill it. If you're up against control. You're probably never going to use this ability in some regard anyways. But if we disregard that. Then to pay the cost you need to rest it so this becomes a useless unit for that turn but you also need to discard a card so basically for generating a force marker you effectively are discarding two cards as this specific card become useless but you also need to discard a card from hand yet that's not worth the force markers or the trouble of getting a falcon on turn one ready as that's a lot of cards for minusing and then you also need to have all the other cards in hand to enable this turn one valkyrian the hoops you need to jump through and the consistency that it supposedly brings is definitely not worth the trouble. And, if, and the fact that it's also limited behind the entire Astro Plane, Astro Poet mechanic means it cannot even be used in another type of Genesis deck. So yeah, for the limited use and in my opinion the utmost useless factor of this card, I can only give it one star as it's just pretty bad. The next up we've got another awkward grade 1 and that is White Wall Sorcerer Vegiva. And her ability is other on Guardian Circle. When placed, cost Counter Blast 1 and this unit gets shield plus 10k. For Counter Blast, you get a 20k shield. Not really worth the time. But then we got the second part of this effect. And if your Vanguard is an Astro Poet, get an Imaginary Gift Force and put that marker on your Vanguard Circle. So now we get a Counter Blast 1, get shield and a Force Marker. We can already deduce that... Counter Blast 1 is already equal enough to getting a Force Marker. So you also get the extra 10k shield on top of it. So that's a pretty good deal. But the only problem is, is that it's a pretty late game card. As it can only work once you are at grade 3. So in turn 1 and turn 2, it doesn't really do anything in your hand. But so after, that, after that, it's a pretty solid card as it gives you a lot of shield value. 20k shield is nothing to sneeze at. So that's already pretty good. Getting the Force Marker is even better. But the fact that... It only works after you're already grade in grade 3 and you need to keep it in hand for defense value makes it somewhat awkward and you're never going to use this effect in a build outside of 
the Astral deck. As just playing counters one for 10k shield is not a good trade-off. So I think it's a two-star card for how it works. Now, it is definitely pretty nice for the Astral deck itself to get this more defensive playstyle. But sacrificing even more offensive capabilities from your rear guards for more defense, it depends on what type of player you are. I'm not really a fan of it, but it can work as you can also put it onto the rearguard circle, attack with it, and then bounce it back with Kumin and then use this guard value. So there are plays you can make with the card, but I think it's in somewhere in the two star range. It's still some quite awkward hoops you need to jump through. Now we got another one of these awkward cards, and that is this grade two. Parfenius of Holy Verse, and her ability is on a regular circle when it attacks while boosted. Cost count plus one. If your Vanguard is an Astral Poet, get an imaginary gift force and put that marker on your Vanguard circle. So not only do you need to be boosting this unit to be able to get the force marker, you also need to be sitting at the Astral Poet. So it doesn't work in the early game, and it doesn't also not work on the first turn of your Riding Grade 3, as is in the attack phase. So you're not going to get a turn one Valkyrian off with this card. But also you need to be able to boost this. The fact that it's a 9k body means the attack column won't be hitting for a good solid number. So it's probably a 10k guard block and that's about it. So you're wasting offensive capabilities for generating more markers. Well, you already can do that with other cards and still have solid cards for beaters. So it depends on how consistent you want to make these markers. You can go full aggro with these markers, but completely sacrifice your rearguard columns. And I'm not really a fan of that, so I'm only going to give it two stars as you need to waste more cards from hand to activate this ability. It's pretty late and it's on a 9k body, which makes it super awkward in my opinion. Then we get a grade 2 that's somewhat similar, but it's a lot better, which makes it more viable. And that is Pluto of Deeply Laid Stratagems. And its ability is on a regular circle. At the end of the battle, it attacked a Vanguard cost counter plus one and put this unit into your soul and one of your units gets power plus 10k until the end of turn if your vanguard is an astro poet get an imaginary gift force and put that marker on the vanguard circle so this is miles ahead of the previous grade two because of a couple of reasons one it doesn't need a booster so you're not waste you're not forced to put more cards into the field two it can even be used before you're sitting on an Astro Poet, and it can be used in other decks that don't run Astro Poets at all, because you can at least use the Countless One and put it into Soul to give one of your units plus 10k power. That's also a bigger plus of the previous Grade 2, as it gives power away to your other units. So if you're in an early situation and they get a defense trigger, you can resolve the skill to at least one of your techs overcome that defense trigger. And it's probably going to be your other column, as your Vanguard Circle is going to get more force markers. And then, if your Vanguard is an Astro Poet, you can get the Imaginary Gift and put it onto the Vanguard Circle. So it that is the same ability. For all those reasons, I think it's a solid 3-star card. As Yes, it's miles ahead of the Grade 2, but still, it's not a 4-star range. As it's not as widely applicable to other cards as Counter Blasting 1 and put it in Soul for 10k power. It's not really that great in non-Astral decks. And also means that in the early game, you're not really going to use this ability as... Just getting a bit more aggression early game for s is not worth it to sacrifice the potential marker you can generate later the turn later. Also, the fact that it's a battle phase ability means you're not going to get a turn one Valkyrian of this skill. Still, it's a solid support card for the Astral deck, but not a four star worth in the case that it's not really that wide applicable. Next up, we've got a very unique grade one, and that is Umbrisial Snake, and this. 6k grade 1 has the following skill, act on regular circle, once per turn, cost sold less 5. You get the imaginary gift force and put the marker on your vanguard circle. Alright, this is a 2 star card as it's not great. As it costs 5 sold less while your grade 3 can get a force marker for 2 sold less. But the only saving grace why this isn't a 1 star is the fact that this can be used early game as it's not restricted to having an Astral Poet, but that's also the second catch, it doesn't require an Astral Poet. So it can be used in any type of deck whatsoever. And you can then combine it with the Soul Reducers to make the skill a little bit more payable, and you, then you can have some Force Marker Acceleration in a non-Astral deck. This can even be applied to Premium, where you can give your units Force Markers, even though you're maybe not running Great Freeze with Force Markers, so, and with all the restanding vanguards in Genesis in the Stride deck, you can get more value out of this. So, yeah, this does have some, some applications, but it's more niche and gimmicky and 
more of or more of Mimi side. So that's why it's a two star card and not an outright one star. Now we get to the cards that are actually pretty useful. And we start off with this great one that is Diana of Moonlight. And her ability is on a regular circle when it attacks is boosted hits, cost counter blast one and soul blast one. Get an imaginary gift force. Put that marker on your Vanguard circle, and if your Vanguard is an Astral Poet, counter charge one. So in the Astral deck, you potentially have late game a Soul Blast one, get a marker. That's pretty good, as that's even cheaper than your Grade 3. Sadly, it's behind an unhitted skill, but then again, it gives your opponent pressure for not letting attacks go through, so it gives you at least some more incentive. And then it stays on the field, so you can have this hit pressure turn after turn after turn. So that's pretty good. But also, it works in any type of Genesis deck, and but then it only costs a counter blast more as you don't get the counter charge off of it. So it is a pretty solid versatile card that can be used in all types of situations and can generate force markers on demand. And if you can put it behind your Vanguard in the early game and just attack with the Vanguard the entire time, your opponent is going to be in an awkward position where you're going to generate a lot of force markers and this thing can spiral out of control from that point onward. So... A pretty good card, and that's why it's definitely a four-star card in my book. Now we get to a grade two that was first revealed as a promo, and then later was announced as that it was also in this set. And I talked about this card before, even though it was a promo, because this card is so good. And I'm talking about this grade two battle maiden Mitsuki. And her ability is auto and finger circle. When placed, cost counter blast one and soul blast one, draw a card. You get an imaginary gift force and put that marker on your Vanguard circle. So for a counter blast and soul blast already getting the draw is all somewhat justified. But then getting the force marker on top of that on grade 2 is pretty damn nuts. And this is the reason why this card is definitely in my books a 5 star card. Because not only is this an amazing card for the whole astral deck. As you have more consistency of getting these force markers early on. And so you have the potential to turn one Valkyrian. But not only that, it works in every other single Genesis deck as it's not restricted in any shape or form. So it can be incorporated in an Artemis deck, it can be worked in a Himiko deck, it can be worked in any other future potential deck for Genesis. And that's what makes this card so insanely good. Sure, it only has a small window of opportunity as it can only work as a Vanguard unit on grade two, but even that, the payout for what you get, the draw and the force marker, gives you so much tempo as this thing activates, makes it all worth it in my opinion. So that's why it's definitely in my books a 5 star card, as it's going to be used in a lot of potential decks. Then next we have a great free that's also very universal uh, usable, as this is Neptunus of Pristine Flows. And its ability is auto and to record circle. When it attacks, while boosted, cost, discard a card from hand, get an imaginary gift force, and put that marker on your Vanguard circle. So once again, we have a unit that needs to be boosted to generate it, and it costs a card from hand. So it does, it, it's quite heavy of a cost, but the upside of this ability is, is that it's a great free that works on Vanguard circle as well as Vanguard circle, Meaning it can be incorporated in any type of deck, it can be used in anything outside of the Astral deck as it's not required to have an Astral Poet to use its effect. But then we got its second ability and that works more in the Astral deck as that is Act on Record Circle. If your Astral Plane has a unit, cause Soul Blast 2 and one unit on your Astral Plane and this unit gets power plus 15k until the end of turn. So basically this, this becomes a 28k beater on its own and it turns your Valkyrian into an 85k beater. It's not really necessary as 70k is already plenty enough, but the fact that you dis distribute more power is a pretty nice addition. But the main value of this card lies in its first ability, and for that I think it's a solid 3 star card. It's not really amazing as you need to build a column, and it costs a discard for a force marker, so it's quite heavy and restrictive. So I think a 3 star rating is justified for that. The next we have two cards that are very unique as they interact with Valkyrian on a different scope than just generating force markers. And the first one they're going to talk about is this great one, Deputized Bear. And its ability is auto rigged circle. When placed, look at the seven cards on the top of your deck, reveal up to one giant deity of distant world Valkyrian from among them and put them into your hand and shuffle your deck. If you put a card into your hand and if your Vanguard circle has two or less force markers, 
put a card from your hand into the soul. So if you haven't really progressed your force marker gain, then this will be a one for one trade. So you get one card in soul and a Valkyrian in hand. It's a nice trade off, but if you already have three or more, then it's an actual plus. And this type of searcher is what the deck really needs, as without Valkyrian, then what's the whole point of accumulating all these force markers and making the astral plane as it doesn't really do anything and you lose a booster for your vanguard sure you not, don't need it with all the force markers but still you lose that and if you don't have the valkyrian in hand then you're all doing it for nothing basically so they need a searcher that's effectively as this one because searching top seven gives you enough good of a chance to fetch the valkyrian within them so for that i think it's a solid four star card for the deck as without the searcher as this i don't really believe you can make the deck function consistently enough as it doesn't really do anything without your Valkyrian. Then the second card that interacts with Valkyrian is Heavenly Wind Sorcerer Burnett. And its abilities are continuous or rigged circle. If your astral plane has a unit, this unit gets power plus 5k. So this is similar to the other unit, grade 1, that has exact same skill. I'm not really fond of this as it means that you don't really have use for it in the early game until you manage to get the astral plane and putting Valkyrian on top of it. And then besides that, it's just a dead skill. But the value lies in second ability as that's act on rigor circle. Cast Soul Blast free. Choose one of your astral deities and until the end of turn, when that unit would attack, it battles all of your opponent's front row units. So basically it turns your Valkyrian into a Vermilion. It's a pretty nice interaction, but the main issue that I have with this card is that this grade 2 is completely dead until you put a Valkyrian onto an astral plane. Besides that, this is just a 10k vanilla. Is that worth the trouble for something like this? No, not in my honest opinion, it's definitely not. And therefore it's only 2 stars as... Yes, yeah, sure, you get two retires out of it, but is that worth running a potential 90% vanilla card in your deck? None in my books. And with that, we come to the last card of the set, and that is the new VR for Genesis. And that is, of course, Quaking Heavenly Dragon as Tori's Dragon. And it got three skills. This first one is Continuous of Vanguard Circle. If your Vanguard Circle has five or more Force Markers, your back row center rearguard circle becomes an Astral Plane. So basically it's just like the Trial Deck Uranus, the ability to generate the Astral Plane. It needs this, otherwise the whole deck couldn't function if only Uranus had the ability. This now gives you the access to two Great Freeze that can generate the Astral Plane. So you can build a deck, no matter on which Great Free you're sitting on, you are going to have the astral plane if you have five force markers underneath your vanguard circle. Now, what is actually the skills that's going to make this card viable? His second ability is act on vanguard circle once per turn, cast count them as one, get an imaginary gift force, and put that marker on your vanguard circle. So, this allows you to get one extra force marker each and every single turn, even if you could not rewrite. That's the upside to this effect that even though you cannot rewrite, you can generate the force marker so that you can progress your game state at least, at least one marker at a time. And then we got the second ability and that's act on Vanguard Circle once per turn. If your Astral Plane has a unit, cost, sold as one and draw a card. So this allows you to get more draw in your deck if you have Valkyrian onto the field. So this interacts a little bit with Valkyrian. On first glance, this looks to be a very solid card as Uranus only does something on place and afterwards it doesn't really do anything. And this card can still grant your value. However, this card becomes redundant really quickly as what are you gonna do at the point that you already have your Astral Plane? You have five force markers. From that point onward, yeah, you can soul bless one to get one draw off. And yeah, you can counter bless to get another, another imaginary gift marker on your vanguard circle. So your vanguard becomes 10k. But after that point, your vanguard's already 63. So the extra power doesn't really matter at the point. It's PG or GG. So yeah. So you have a VR main boss monster that's mainly only there to say, well, I'm going to soul bless one to draw one if I have Valkyrie in my hand and can place it. And if you combine the two skills together... It's actually this, almost the same as the grade 2 Battle Maiden that we just talked about for the 5-star one. That's also Counter Blast, Soul Blast, draw a card, and generate a Force Marker. It is Counter Blast, generate a Force Marker, Soul Blast, draw a card. Only with a little bit more restriction to it, but you can keep generating the Force Markers. That's not something we come to expect from VR. This is, this is basically a consistency tool and not really anything else. It doesn't really pressure your opponent even more. It, it just helps your engine to go live and nothing else. 
So you could compare this with something like King of Knights Alfred that wasn't really a spectacular finish. It basically gives you more consistency and get to your pieces. But the problem is with this card is that we're now almost two years apart from that card's release and having a card in the same ballpark as that card two years later down the road isn't really that ideal. And for that, I can only give this card three stars as unlike Uranus, this card doesn't really match well with other decks because it needs to be on the Vanguard Circle. Uranus at least has the option to be used as a rear guard as well, which makes this card usable as you can have this as a Vanguard and then place Uranus as a rear guard to generate all those extra force markers. But this one cannot really be tacked into another deck because if you run this in another deck that isn't going to use the whole astral play mechanic, then his third ability is a death skill and you only use it to get more force markers. And that's not really where you want to use a great free for, especially if you need to ride it as a Vanguard. So that's why I can only give this card three stars as it's just a generic support card that makes the deck more consistent. But once we get an actual great free boss monster, like with the new upcoming Uranus, this one would probably be replaced in one second. And with that one second, or in this case almost an hour, we talked about all the new cards for Genesis. And there is a lot that has been going on in this set, as including with the trial deck, as not only did we get some generic support card, but we got a bunch of new cards that do all kinds of crazy things with generating a lot of force markers as they interact well with the new trial deck Uranus, as well as Asteroid's Dragon to generate this astral plane to accompany their new godly being Valkyrian and it's a very interesting new mechanic for Vanguard as a whole as this is a completely new concept and we have to wait to see how they're gonna build upon this with future support and currently we only have one astral deity and I'm very curious if we're going to get a second one or maybe a whole plethora of these uh, units to have some different kinds of choices in what kind of astral being we want to include in our deck as a boss monster or finisher because in honest opinion, the VR and Trial Deck unit aren't actually the boss monsters. It's actually Valkyrian. That is the boss monster of the new Genesis deck. And that's really odd to say, as usually it's the Trial Deck Grade 3 or the new VR. But in this case, it's neither. So yeah, there's a lot to discuss and a lot to think about with this new card. So let me know in the comments down below all your thoughts and opinions about this new card for Genesis. And with that, I'm going to end the video because this video has been going on long enough. So as always, I want to thank my Patreon supporters for making this video possible. You guys are amazing. If you don't want to support the channel, then head over to patreon.com slash Insider and become a Patreon today. But with that said... I'm Mr. Timely, and I see you guys in the next one.